Hello, I'm Jonathan Field from PTFS Europe and I'm delighted to be joined today by my colleagues. Uh, first of all, Fiona Borthwick, our Customer Relationship Manager, and also Andrew Isherwood, our Senior Software Developer. Hello to you both. Hi. Hi. So, what's on our mind this week? Uh, we've been thinking about SMS messaging, text messaging, so I guess quite a lot of you are familiar with getting SMS messages for various online services, um, probably particular public services. Uh, for example, I've received one from the blood donation service this morning, just reminding me about my appointment, those kind of notices. And we've had a lot of inquiries recently about uh, using more SMS services in order to send overdue notices, hold pickup notices and other kind of notifications from COA. So we thought we'd talk a little bit about that today <clears throat> and I'll perhaps uh, start by asking you, Andrew, um, you know, which providers we've actually worked with up until now and you know how easy is it to work with new providers? Um, well, to date, we've worked with three different providers, uh, 123 uh, TXT, um, BT Smart Messaging, and the Gov UK notification service. Um, working with a new provider is generally fairly straightforward. Um, as long as they provide an open API that we can uh, connect to, then um, it's just a case of writing a driver. Um, each provider needs a driver so COA can talk to their API. Um, all the uh, drivers we've written so far are uploaded to CPAN, which is the Perl uh, module uh, repository. Uh, you can see on the screen there, there's one there for the, um, the Gov UK. Oh, well, actually all three are there. Um, so those are the three that we've written so far. Um, so when we're working with a new provider, we get their API documentation, we write a driver, um, and then generally things are just good to go. Great. So as you mentioned, the latest one that we've we've written, and um, I know that was one you fast tracked through, particularly because of the COVID-19 situation. That's the Gov UK, mm -hmm. which is the UK government service. Um, so perhaps you could, I think that's quite an interesting service in itself. So I don't know whether you, perhaps you could explain a bit more about that particular service, because I think it will probably be applicable to quite a few of our customers. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's not something I was aware of previously, um, but it's a service provided for uh, central government, uh, local authorities and the NHS. Um, and it provides a number of different services. Um, it provides an email service. So if you need to uh, contact uh, your users in bulk by email, um, it will help you do that. Um, they can even do printing and posting. So if you've got a box and a large number of letters, they can they help you with that. And the service that we were interested in was their SMS service. Um, and when you sign up for an account with them, you get uh, up to 250,000 free texts a year. Um, it's less if you're local government, but central government gets um, uh, 250,000 a year. Um, and then after that, it's uh, just over one and a half peer message. So it's amazing service so uh, yeah we were really really pleased to be working with them yeah well, i guess 250,000 messages is probably a good quota for for anybody really yeah <clears throat> particularly in the library sector um so perhaps um i i could ask you then uh fiona how this sort of yeah. works on the on on the coa side where 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 does it actually sort of appear in coa yeah, so Andrew does all the hard work behind the scenes and in terms of COHA, there's a couple of system preferences that um, you need to consider. So if we go in and have a look at the preferences and search for SMS, we can see that there is one that specifically asks you to input the, the driver that you you're using for your SMS service and there's also the ability to put in your login credentials so your username and your password uh, uh, as well um, and once you've identified your driver in this case it would then open up the SMS facilities within the messaging preferences for, for okay. a user record yeah and this is the actual uh, CPAN name isn't it Andrew I think I'm right in saying yeah that's right yeah so that, that matches what we saw on the on the CPAN site here. Yep. So 
Uh, where where does that uh, the phone number actually appear in the in the user record then? So if we if we have a look at a user record, you'll find that there is an SMS SMS alert number appearing just underneath the message and preferences. Okay, so that's this one. So that here. that's it in there, yeah. And also, you'll see just above that in the message and preferences area, there is now a column where you can tick on messages for SMS. Okay, yeah. Yep. Now, um, it's important to note that Koha interface actually expects the mobile phone number to be entered in that kind of manner with the country code and then the, the drop of the lead in zero. So Andrew probably has something to comment on, on this. Uh, I was just going to add that um, although Koha expects the number in that format uh, because the the providers can be quite diverse and they may expect them in different formats so we always make sure that our drivers will convert whatever you enter there into the the format that the uh, the provider expects right okay. and presumably well obviously sms's are short notices so how does that relate to the way that notices are generally set up in in coa <laughs> So essentially, it works in exactly the same way. If we now have a look at the tools area and go into the overdue triggers, um, we can see that you've got an SMS column again, so you can highlight which user categories should receive which notice files right. by SMS. Um, in this example, we can see that a staff user should receive an overdue notice in the SMS. So. In in terms of constructing the text that would actually be sent to the user, that's all done through the notices and slips area in the same way as emails. So if we just have a look into the notices and slips for that particular overdue notice that was referenced in the triggers. So we can see um, within the notice files itself, that we've got um, the breakdown where we've got the text for email, and we've got the text for SMS. Okay. So we would just construct the, the text in that way uh, as we would with any email file. Yeah, I presume you're limited to the amount of text you can put in there because obviously it's a short message. So yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> That's great. So that all looks that looks pretty straightforward to set up, I think. Yeah, it certainly is from the co interface side anyway. Most of the work's done behind the scenes. Yeah. And I think we're, from the people we're speaking to, we're getting great feedback on the ability to be able to send out those SMSs. It's a Definitely. great alternative, yeah. great alternative to print, great alternative to email, and obviously the gov.uk uh, service makes it um, very competitively priced as well for public mm -hmm. bodies. So, great. Well, thank you very much, both of you, for your time right. this afternoon. Uh, it's probably just worth saying that. Um, there is a cost if we have to write new drivers. Obviously, those drivers that we've already written are there and available right now. Uh, there's a, just a small configuration and setup cost for those. But uh, other than that, we can just plug them in and, and they're ready to go. Yep. So thank you very much, both of you. And Thanks. we'll speak to you all next time. This is Jonathan Field from PTFS Europe. Thanks. Okay, bye. bye.